Hello and welcome to your financial management online class. Last time we talked about simple and geometric averages for historical data. This time we're going to talk about averages again, but we're going to talk about the cases when you don't have historical data, when you instead want to look into the future. So we're going to look at expected future returns based on a range of possibilities for that future. Generally, we're going to look at this formula, where expected return is the sum of all the products of possible returns and the probabilities of those possible returns taking place. If it all sounds like jumbo, mumbo, mumbo, jumbo, uh, don't despair. An example will clarify things. Let's say you're investing into this toy maker, Toys for You Co. or whatever. And let's say these are the possible outcomes for the future. There might be a recession, there might be a normal growth, or there might be a fast growth in future. And these outcomes have these probabilities. A recession is 25% chance likely, 50% chance for normal growth, 25% chance for fast growth. And if these outcomes take place in the future, these are the returns that you would get you would expect to get on your investment. So if a recession happens, you'd probably suffer 20% loss. In the case of a normal growth and a fast growth, you'd gain 15 and 35% return. As this formula suggests, we want to multiply the probabilities by this return for each of the outcomes. Probability times the return for each of the outcomes. Once you add up all of them, that is your expected return, which is 11.25%. Another thing we did last time is we looked at measures of dispersion, standard deviation and variance. That was a simple formula that you could use in Excel for historical data. But for this sort of data, looking into the future with a range of outcomes, you can't simply use one simple Excel formula. So the way to calculate variance and standard deviation is as follows. First, we need to look at all the differences of the returns corresponding to different outcomes from the mean. The differences of these returns from the expected return. That's these returns minus the average or expected return. Hit F4 to fix the green reference so that it doesn't move when I copy the formula. Next, let's copy this formula. And I want to look at all of these differences together when I look at the variance. However, some of these are negative, some of these are positive. So that they don't cancel each other out, I'm going to take a power of 2 of everything. Let's call it difference squared. That's the difference into the power of 2. Copy that, and the next thing I have to do is multiply the probabilities by this squared difference. Probability times this squared difference, and copy the formula. Once you add up all of these numbers of the probabilities times the squared differences, what you'd get is the variance. So generally, the formula for the variance is shown here. That's the sum of the product of the probabilities of different outcomes times the square of the difference between the returns in those outcomes and expected return, or the mean. 